Dudes, welcome to Census Style. My name's Stuart. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to be talking, this is a request video by the way, today I'm going to be talking about 10 fragrances that I just can't live without. First up, I'm going to be talking about a fragrance that's, well, it's not a single fragrance. It's more of a, a scent, and the scent is Silver Mountain Water by Creed. And I don't actually have that, but what I do have are two clones. This is Supremacy in Heaven by Afnan, and this is Derby Clubhouse Blanche by Armov. And both of these are really, really good clones of Silver Mountain Water. Now, there's a better Armov one. It's called Club de Nuit Siege. I don't have that. I've never tried it. It is more expensive than these two, and it's a lot more expensive than this. But I don't really need it. I already have two, so I haven't tried it. But I do like both of these. They are slightly different though. This is very inexpensive, um, super cheap, uh, but it doesn't perform that well. But one thing I like about this compared to Supremacy in Heaven is that this one's a little bit brighter, just a touch, like, you know, 5% brighter. And I like the smell of this, but it only lasts three hours or four hours, maybe. This one is more of a full wear. You get about five or six hours from it. So this one's better performer. If I want to just have a spritz, I'll wear this. If not, I want to wear it, wear it for the day, I'll wear this one. I've done another video on the top 10 smells of all time in Cologne, and I've never put this on. This is Chanel Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme, and this one is the subtlety. This one, You have to appreciate the subtlety of this one in order to get it. What it is is basically, it's basically uh, Versace Pour Homme, which is very similar to Chanel Allure Homme Sport, but then with the Eau Extreme, they really ramped up the Tonka bean. So you've got a really fresh fragrance mixed with Tonka bean. And it's blended so beautifully. It's just very, very smooth fragrance. And I love it. It's absolutely fantastic. It was never something that I fully appreciated until recently. Third fragrance, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Le Parfum. This was a number one fragrance by Fragrantic, I think in 2020. So, but basically what this is, is this is the 54th flanker, 54th, of the original Le Mal that came out in 1995. And this is the first one that they really got right. A lot of people love this fragrance. What it is, is it's, there's, a, there's a hint of the original Le Mal in this, but there's tons of cardamom added. So it's like, imagine the original Le Mal with less vanilla and lavender and a nice big dose of cardamom. And this is absolutely gorgeous. A lot of people love this. Um, can be a little hard to get, but nowadays it seems pretty available, but I, I love that. And, you know, a lot of fragrances I like come in black bottles. I like the darker fragrances. Next up, this is Versace's best dark fragrance, probably Versace's best fragrance. This is Oud Noir, and this is a really good introduction to Oud. Some people say this smells like Oud Wood. I don't know. I've never smelled Oud Wood, but... Uh, I know I absolutely adore this. This has got oud with a lot of saffron to sort of... See, oud is kind of a heavy, dense note, and it's it can be a little off-putting, so they put it with saffron, which is a very bright, almost kind of peppery type note to offset it. There's tons of saffron in this, and there's tons of oud, and again, there's cardamom in the dry down. That's a great date-night scent. That's a great dark winter scent, and that's the kind of scent that I really like. So you get a, an oud, a taste of oud at the top, and that goes away after about an hour, and then you get a beautiful date night scent at the bottom. It's a little bit more expensive, oud, oud noir, a little bit more expensive than your typical $50 Versace offering, but it's a lot better. It's my favorite Versace by far. We've got another fragrance that is uh, got a noir, <laughs> a noir theme to it. This is called uh, Noir Ombre. This is by Isi Miyake, and... Uh, this is absolutely fantastic. This is a very difficult fragrance to find. The only place I've ever seen it available is at fragrancebuy.ca, and it kind of comes and goes, but when it's in stock, you've got to grab it in like 24, 48 hours or it's gone. Uh, I'm not sure it's available at the moment. If I had to guess, I would say no. So this is one of the designer fragrances that's super hard to find. All that said, what is it basically? Well, it is a slightly fresher, and I think, and most people think, I think, a little bit better than Parfum de Marly Habdan. Um, so it's it's very similar to Habdan, um, but it, it's not quite niche price. 
So that's kind of neat. The only thing is this is harder to find than Habda. But it's a darker apple than the apple that you get with Leighton. Leighton, you get more of a brighter uh, apple pie kind of vibe. You get lots of vanilla, uh, more of a fresh apple. With uh, Noir Ombre, you get a darker apple. So it's a little bit different. But it's super nice. And if you have a frag head that you know or somebody that's into fragrances in a big way, chances are they will have this or they'll really want it. This one is, is, is uh, it's a gem. Next up we have a fragrance. Now the first one that I talked about, the Silver Mountain Water one, that is my summer signature scent. This one, this is Fahrenheit Le Parfum by Christian Dior. And this is my cool weather scent signature. And I absolutely adore this. This is, actually this is Fahrenheit, which I also love. I love Fahrenheit, but this is from 1988. So it's got a real kind of 90s vibe. It's very dark and very uh, masculine. It's got a lot of um, violet leaf and leather. So it's very kind of old school masculine. It's got that typical um, petrol cord that everyone talks about. It smells a little bit like gasoline. It's like a greener, but it's not exactly gasoline, a little bit greener than gasoline. I love this, but this part, Le Parfum, has been modernized. It came out in 2014. They added a ton of vanilla. In the 21st century, you know, men are allowed to wear sweeter fragrances. In general, you know, this is a lot sweeter than the original. But I, I read some articles that said that this one doesn't have much of the original DNA. That's rubbish. This has got tons of the original Fahrenheit with a little bit of a boozy note. There's a little bit of a whiskey note in there and tons more vanilla. It's absolutely amazing. Next up is another dark fragrance. This one actually is my only niche, and it's uh, this is a, a decant, a large decant. This is Black Orchid by Tom Ford. And this one it can be a little debatable as to whether you can wear it if you're a guy because it is marketed to women. However, if you go to Fragrantica and you see who wears it, generally most people think it's unisex. So if you've been to fragrances a long time, you'll probably be able to handle the orchid note, which is quite prominent prominent and quite feminine and yeah if so if you really like dark fragrances and if you really like uh, sweet fragrances this one's got uh, chocolate and truffles it's very very rich and then it's got that uh, that as I said that orchid note which is a little feminine but if you like the dark fragrances it'll be worth it I bought that uh, after trying it at a store and I thought oh you know what I'll just get a, an eight milliliter travel spray I bought it. I thought, oh, you know what? I'll wear this for special occasions. Within two weeks, I finished the whole thing. I went out and bought another large decant. So, yeah, uh, it's something that I really, really will continue to buy. I absolutely adore it. Next up is an old school fragrance. And with a kind of a new school piece of advice that I have for you, the next one is Polo Green, or just plain Polo by Ralph Lauren. This is from 1978. This was kind of the smell of the 80s, the kind of high-end smell of the 80s. If you were a common man in the 80s, you would probably have used Drakkar Noir, which is another good fragrance. But if you had some cash, this one was your bet. This is still gorgeous. The one problem that I have with this is that it's been watered down a lot. Anyway, I'll describe it. It's got leather, tobacco, and it's got a very prominent pine note. So it's kind of greeny without entirely being greeny, but it's just, this is one of those fragrances where if you're a young guy and you're really becoming, going into collecting and you're collecting in a big way, this is something you don't need to necessarily buy, but you need to try it to understand a classic fragrance from the old school. Uh, there are a few of those, but this is definitely one you, I would try. Now, this one's been watered down so much um, that it still smells nice, but not as good as, and I just found this recently, this is by Afnan. It's called Highness 3. Um, I think there's another name for it, but I'll, I'll put a picture up here. And uh, Highness 3 by Afnan, and it is just like an old school, original polo green. It just smells much more powerful. And it's not cheap either, even though it's from Afnan. It's just a really, really good fragrance. And I do recommend, if you, if you really like the polo green, to get this instead of the watered down version that, that Ralph Lauren sells. Next up, we've got another fragrance uh, that's dark, no surprise. This one is Prada Intense, or also the proper name is Prada Amber Pour Homme Intense. Now, this is a flanker to the original 
Prada Amber Pore Homme. Now this one is also really nice too, but I prefer this. This one is like a saffron balm. Jeremy Fragrance's sa uh, saffron is like a really sharp, bright kind of note. Uh, Jeremy Fragrance says this smells like really, really expensive soap. I think that's a good description. And then this smells like even more expensive soap. This uses saffron to really make the, the you know, the point. And this uses benzoin. So this is more resinous. This also, I pick up a little bit more floral in this. This is, and I've never heard anyone else say this, so don't hold me to it. But my personal feeling is this can feel a little feminine at times. A little feminine. Um, but this is marketed to men. Uh, and that's another thing. Be careful because there's a, a Prada Intense for women and the Prada Intense for men. That's why it's safer to just go Prada Amber Pore Om Intense. But anyway, yeah, this one I found a little floral at times. I still love it, though. I still like it better than the other one, which isn't feminine. Um, and I'm not really a huge fan of feminine fragrances, but this is really nice. It's really, it's a little bit darker than Amber Pore Om, but it's like a soapy, sort of darker mix. And then finally, I have a fragrance that's been talked about so much, I just kind of left it to the end. This is Dior Om Intense, and this came out in 2011. And this is, like, if you're a frag head, if you're into fragrances in a big way, this is something that you have to have and you eventually will have, guaranteed. Because everybody in the fragrance community that, that's tried a lot of fragrances, they love this. People say that's got a chocolatey feel. I'm not sure I would use that expression. I think it's more about like a really nice iris, which is kind of a neutral note. It's not really a typical floral, even though it's a flower. It's somewhat neutral, but it's very powdery. And iris mixed with embrette, which is a, a seed, and it's a kind of mildly sweet. Now, the embrette comes off as creamy, and the iris comes off as powdery, and you get powdery feel sometimes, you get a creamy feel sometimes, and those two things are the opposite, because what is creamy? Well, it's powdery with a lot of moisture, and yet it manages to feel both ways. It's a, it's a work of art. Most people that are heavily into fragrances love this. It's very expensive. But this one is available. You can find this. It's not like something like this, which is really hard to find. You can get Dior Homme Intense. It's just expensive. But this is something, if you're heavily into fragrances, this is something you ought to grab. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Take it easy.